I'm Thomas Baldrick. Pleasure to have with me here at ASH 2014 is Dr. Ravi Vidge from the Washington University School of Medicine. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much for the invitation. Let's talk about multiple myeloma and why are there why are there needs for new therapies for these patients? So in multiple myeloma, we certainly made tremendous progress over the last decade or two in terms of improving longevity of our patients with stem cell transplantation and novel therapies, especially proteasome inhibitors and immunomodulatory drugs. However, the disease for most part is still incurable, though we've uh, change it into a chronic disease, we uh, continue to strive for the elusive uh, cure, and especially in patients who have failed proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, their lifespan, unfortunately, is still somewhat limited, and new classes of agents are certainly required in that uh, population, but we could probably make uh, progress even in other lines of therapy to uh, improve results. Let's talk about your study uh, focused on uh, ibrutinib. So ibrutinib, I presented the results of a phase two study uh, here as a single agent and in combination with uh, the steroid dexamethasone. Uh, there were four cohorts of patients. There were uh, uh, responses uh, seen in this uh, study. The higher dose cohort uh, on the ibrutinib uh, with dexamethasone seemed to have the best uh, activity with a clinical benefit rate that is uh, a, a patient population that was uh, for most part heavily exposed to uh, immunomodulatory drugs and proteasome inhibitors and about three-fourths of them had had steroids in their immediate prior line of therapy. Uh, that population when uh, exposed to ibrutinib and uh, dexamethasone had a clinical benefit rate of uh, 25 percent. Another 25 percent had disease stabilization for four months or more. So I think in a heavily refractory population that is a signal that the drug requires uh, further study, especially in combination with other drugs. What do you think is most significant about what you've found so far? I think that the uh, prolonged uh, disease stabilization and also uh, the uh, hints of uh, uh, true partial responses uh, in the uh, study uh, were uh, proof that the uh, agent is probably living up to its theoretical potential of having a multi-pronged approach uh, and attack on the cancer, both in terms of uh, attacking the cancer cell and the microenvironment. It is, uh, for most part, probably a microenvironment uh, modifier, and hence uh, combination strategies make uh, even more sense. What might some next steps be? So uh, the drug has uh, certainly uh, accrued more patients at the higher dose level with the dexamethasone, and uh, that data was not presented here because the follow-up is uh, too short. Certainly we want to see what the uh, response rate turns out to be in that larger cohort of patients. Uh, also, uh, there is already a phase 1-2 uh, study in combination with the proteasome inhibitor carfilzomib that is ongoing. The phase 1 portion of that study is finished accrual. There are several other studies. Uh, with of the drug in combination with both proteasome inhibitors and immunomodulatory drugs that are in the planning stages. So I think that a continued exploration of the drug in a phase two uh, uh, setting in combination is uh, where we need to wait for more data. Please come back and visit us and keep us posted, would you? Thank you, you very much. Thanks for I being here. Appreciate it. Okay. My pleasure. Thank you.